Hey friends, this is Jenny, and today I have a story time about the time that my patient came to visit me after she passed away. So, are you ready? Let's go. Hi you guys, I just wanted to tell you guys a really quick story about um, how our thoughts actually are energy, and they are things, and we can receive them even if the person is no longer here. Um, I have a really good example of this, a really a true life story uh, from a nurse's point of view because I work as a registered nurse when I'm in my real life here. <laughs> um, anyway, so this story came up uh, because a friend and I were talking and I used, I was telling this story about a really good experience I had when a patient passed away. And come to think of it, it really is a good example of thoughts being things and how um, they can be transmitted to us even if the person is no longer here on the physical realm in their human body. Okay, so I had this patient. Um, we clicked from the very beginning when she came in. Um, I was the nurse that admitted her. I'm the one that got her settled in, made her feel comfortable, you know, did the head to toe assessment. Um, and we hit it off right from the very beginning because she was just making me laugh. Um, she reminded me of my grandma and I told her that. I said, oh my God, you look like my grandma. You remind me of my grandma. Anyway, um, from the very, very get go, she was like probably in her late eighties. Um, I just fell in love with her. I can't explain it. It was just a connection that we had. So anyway, she would always make me laugh because she had this microphone. It's this little box that has a microphone attached to it and she would use it for hearing problems. But I had never seen one of those. So I grabbed her microphone and I'm like, can you hear me? And she would just start laughing. Anyway, um, so because we connected right away from the very beginning, I always got excited when I knew that she was my patient for the day because I never knew what assignment I was going to be given when I would get to work. So um, I would mostly I would have her on my assignment and she would always have this huge like just this huge cup of pills that she had to take all the time. And maybe, probably only maybe three of them were essential, like, you know, for cardiac or whatever, for heart failure. But the, all the rest of them were uh, vitamins prescribed by the MD. And it's like, are you kidding me? This woman is like 88. She's taking these big giant horse pills for calcium and magnesium and, uh, you know, multivitamins and iron and just, so many pills and there's no way that even I could take pills like that um, especially when she's elderly you know her metabolism's not going to be as good as ours and also um, you know they're just uh, hard to swallow and digest and all that but she was such a good sport she always took her pills she always took all her vitamins and I always felt bad giving them to her but and I would even say, you know, you don't have to take these. These aren't essential. These are your vitamins, but I have to offer them to you. And she would just roll her eyes and she would take them. She would always take them. So anyway, it wasn't long before she started to decline. And um, it was expected, you know. I mean, she was at the end stage of her life and her uh, heart failure was taking over. Um, but in the meanwhile, I'd see her son. She had this really nice, handsome son, by the way, who would come in daily and um, or nightly, actually, and just check in with her really quick, and then he'd leave. But we never really talked because I would always just give him his privacy with his mom, and he never really had any questions for me. But I did see him at times with other nurses or other nursing staff questioning them, and he would be like, really intensely questioning them about things, you know? And then there was times when I would have to go up and say, is there something I can help you with? And I would just calm everything down, you know? Then he appreciated that. So anyway, um, so we were at the end and she was now a hospice patient and we were just keeping her comfortable, giving her morphine. I didn't really have to give her any Ativan. Um, we had it on board for anxiety, but um, mostly the morphine is what she needed in the end, especially with the heart failure and she was having shortness of breath and all that. So 
we were at the end and um, her granddaughter came in one night and her granddaughter would also come in maybe like a couple times a week, maybe just like twice a week. And I would always give them their privacy. Like I said, I never would like interrupt anything. Um, I'd wait till the family left before I would go in and do any treatments or anything I had to do with her. So this one night, the granddaughter came in and it was probably two nights before the patient passed away. So the granddaughter comes in as her usual thing. And then all of a sudden she comes running out of the room and her eyes were really big. And she was just standing there and I go, what's going on? Can I help you? And she's like, my grandma can't hear me. What's wrong with my grandma? What's wrong with my grandma? And we always, you know, we always like read these cards to each other and, you know, she writes me cards and then I read them to her every night, the same cards. It doesn't matter. We just read these cards to each other that we wrote to each other over the years, right? And she's like, now my grandma, she's not responding. And so I told her, you know, go ahead, go in the room and because the hearing is the last thing to go and I want you to continue to do what you always do. Continue to read her the cards. She can hear you. And then I said, and also just, I would recommend saying anything that you would want to say, get it out of your system, tell her you love her because this may be the last time you see her. Um, so say it all and get your closure now. And she just looked at me and you know, she took a deep breath and she went back in the room and she was in there for a while. And then she just sped out of the room when she was done. And I thought, good, you know, she said everything. I went and checked on the patient and I said, you know, I'm so glad your granddaughter was here. That was such a blessing for the both of you. And you know, my patient was not responsive by now, but she was, I could tell, I just felt like I could tell she could hear everything. So, but they get to the point where they can only hear, but they, their body is so weak that they can't even turn their head or wink or blink or whatever. It just takes too much energy for them to do all of that. So you just have to assume, just in case you don't know this, just assume that they can hear you. And it, even if they look like they can't hear you, they can hear you and assume that they can hear you. Cause I, at the end of this story, you're gonna find out. So, a couple days go by, like I think it was like two days before she passed away, like I said, that the granddaughter was there. So the next night, the son comes in and he says, I just wanna tell you, thank you so much for whatever, all the things you said to my daughter because that meant so much to her and she felt like she got her closure and I wanna thank you so much because that really, it was meaningful to her. And you know, had you not said that, she would not have gotten the closure that she got to have. And um, so he was thanking me and then he left. And the next day I come to work and I'm gonna do a double shift. I'm on 16 hours straight. And I was just praying that, that I was gonna have her on my lineup. Probably I would have switched lineups just to have her. So they, I, I had her, she was on my lineup. I was gonna have her for 16 hours straight. And I knew that was gonna be the day she was gonna pass away. And I was so grateful that I was gonna be her nurse because I knew <clears throat> that I would give her what she needed. Um, I just had a connection, you know? And um, I knew that the other nurses would prioritize other things because I mean, just sometimes you get to the point where you have to prioritize the people that are still living and have a chance to keep living. And I get that and I, I there's a way to balance that, but um, she was a priority to me, so I told her that day, you know, I'm gonna be your nurse all day and I'm gonna take care of you, so you will have nothing to worry about. You, I'm gonna keep you comfortable. Um, I want this to be an easy transition for you, blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. And I could tell, like, it just seemed like she heard me, she understood, and she was relaxing into it. So um, the 16 hours goes by, I did everything. I could to make sure she was comfortable and she was. Um, and then I knew when I got off duty that she was gonna pass away shortly after, but I had to come back to work the next morning. I had to be back to work at seven in the morning, or no, 6.30. And I had like an hour and a half drive home because I lived way out in the country. And then I had an hour and a half drive back, which is, that's three hours of just driving. That takes away from, that gives me only five hours from the time I get home to sleep, get up, get ready, you know what I mean? So on those nights, I would only get like maybe three hours of sleep. 
So I couldn't wait. Like, I just gave her my last goodbye and I left, went home. Hour and a half drive. I get home to my little place out in the country. There's like, there's no one around, you know? I'm, I'm by myself with the animals. And I'm sitting in my apartment and all of a sudden, you know, I'm just sitting there trying to like unwind. Usually I'll just unwind for a few minutes and then I go to bed. So I'm sitting there in the living room chair and I had the TV turned on. I had just turned it on and I was just kind of waiting for it to warm up, whatever, you know, the internet stuff. And I'm just sitting there and in between my chair where I was sitting and where the TV was, is just blank area. There's no coffee table or anything because it was just a little place. And all of a sudden out of the corner of my eye, I see like these, just movement that caught my attention. And I, I'm like, cause I'm just kind of like staring at the TV, like waiting for it to warm up. But this movement out of the corner of my eye, so I look, you know, this has all happened so fast, but I'm giving it to you in slow motion. All the things I was thinking when I saw it. So I look over and it's like these black flickers of, elect it looked like, it looked like sparkles. So you know how like, have you ever seen electricity when you get shocked, like um, when from human to human, when you touch someone and it flickers, um, and you get static electricity and it's kind of like these black sparkles really fast. Um, it's like that static electricity. So that's what I was seeing. And then, and so I'm like, what is that? Cause at first I thought it was a bunch of like little black gnats or something, you know, I don't know, I'm out in the country. And it was cold, it was during the winter. She passed away on Thanksgiving. So it was like the end of November. It was November 25th, exactly. Um, it was Thanksgiving and she passed away. So anyways, but she, uh, as far as I knew, she was alive when I left work, okay? But I knew she was gonna go. So I'm home, I see the static electricity. And at, for a second I'm thinking, is my window open? Is something blowing in? No, window was closed, curtains weren't moving at all. But, so here comes these black sparkles, okay? All of a sudden they just start expanding out and then they start moving towards me but they're all in a formation now. They're like in this tunnel formation and they start swirling. And so they're tall like a, cause it just started out in a small little flickers and then it just started expanding out and it was swirling like a tornado in front of me. And it, as it was coming towards me, it was getting bigger and bigger. It, it was swirling and I quick looked at the clock to see what time it was because I thought that's her, this is her. She's giving me some kind of a goodbye, you know, or thank you. and. This is what I mean about thoughts. It was her. I'm telling you, I'll okay, get, get through this story. So I'm like, I look at the clock. It's like 10 minutes after midnight. I think to myself really quick, when I get to work in the morning, I need to look at the chart, see what time she passed away. This is her, you know, I'm thinking all this while it's happening really fast. And then she, it, she, it comes up to me and there's no, you can't feel like any wind blowing. You, it's just the weirdest thing. You're seeing the motion, but it's not like it's causing wind to blow. It's just these, this motion and then of these black sparkles. And then it just whoosh, goes like past me, like right past my shoulder. And then it's just gone. And that was it. There was no noise. There was no motion towards me, like wind or anything. So I thought, oh my gosh, that's her. She passed away and she came to say goodbye. Like I just, it was like everything was spoken to me via energy and, but I got it. And I just was in awe. So the sparkles formed a deliberate funnel, like a cone shape, like with intelligence and, um, it was very deliberate. It was very cool. I'll never forget it. So the next morning I go to work. I pull her chart. First, The first thing I'm asking is, what time did she pass away? What time did she pass away? And they're like, oh, I don't know. It was around midnight. And I go, but what time? What time? You know? They're like, I don't know. It was a little bit after midnight. So I pull her chart because no one knew why I wanted to know. I pull her chart and it said like uh, eight minutes after midnight or whatever. So, you know, it's so that time. I was like, oh my God, that was her, that had to be her. And I, it, it like totally, I just had to let that sink in. So of course I couldn't get that off my mind. I thought, oh my gosh, when I see her son, David, I need to ask him, I need to ask him if he experienced anything after she passed away. 
So I think it was like two days went by and he came in to say thank you and pick up her belongings and to just, you know, say thank you to everyone. And then he comes up to me and he's like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're here. I want to thank you personally for everything you did for my mom. You were so good to her and I just want to thank you. And she appreciated it. And, you know, he was just that kind of guy that was, he was like her, you know. So anyway, um, so he's telling me all that and I go, David, I go, I got to tell you something come with me. So I pull him by the arm. He's like, okay. You know, he's just following me down the hall. And I go, I'm trying to get somewhere where like, we can just not be interrupted. Cause I got to tell you this. I, and I'm looking at him and he's like, okay. And then I go, he's real tall. And I'm looking up at him and I'm like, oh, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. So I told him what happened and he got this look on his face. Like, and I thought, oh shit, I blew it. Like, I blew it. He thinks I'm crazy. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you. To me, it just, I felt like it was your mom saying goodbye and telling me thank you. And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, I, I, I don't think this is weird at all. He goes, but what's weird is that she had a friend. He goes, first of all, you were her nurse and you guys had a close connection. She goes, but I'm her son and I didn't even get to, to see any of that. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, maybe that's not what it was, I, you know. And then he goes, no, I believe you. I believe you because she had a friend that um, they knew, it, they never met. They were pen pals for like 50 years, he said. They were pen pals. They never met, but they would write to each other every day. They would just write to each other every day. It, it was just something that they had, although they never met ever. She was on the other side of the United States. So he says she called me and she asked me, if my mom was still alive, she said, did your mom pass away is what she said. And he goes, as a matter of fact, yeah, well, why? And she said, I knew it. She said, because such and such night, the same night as me, she goes, I was woken up in the middle of the night and there was this swirling, sparkly tornado, tornado at, the, at the foot of my bed. She said it was just swirling. And she said, and then it moved above my bed. It moved above me and he, she said, I just knew it was your mother saying thank you and saying goodbye. So he tells me that and I'm like, oh my God. And he goes, yeah, there, there's a time change from here, from California to where she was, like back in Missouri or someplace. So when he told me the time and, you know, I had told him the time I saw it and then we connected when she actually passed away, of course it all matched up. And so that was confirmation. That's confirmation that thoughts are energy. They are things. We can receive them even when the person isn't here anymore. Um, for that woman all the way on the other side of the United States to see what I saw and to, it's just a knowing, a knowing that it was her, enough for her to call the son and ask, you know, and, um, and so it all lined up, like, and it was just such confirmation that it made me think, like, we, it's a real thing. It's not hoity-toity, you know? There is something else going on. So our thoughts definitely are, like, living things that can, I mean, we can create with them. I mean, what else can we do with them? You know what I mean? Like, how powerful is that? How powerful is the energy that's invisible? that we never learned about when we were growing up. You know, I didn't, I didn't learn about it when I was growing up. I know the kids growing up now are gonna learn about it and they're already learning about it, but isn't that so amazing? That's just so cool. And so I just wanted to share that story. I have a lot of nurse stories that are really, really cool um, about people when they've passed over, when they're getting ready to pass and I'll share them. But um, that was the one for today. So <laughs> let that sink in guys, let that sink in. So anyways, have a good rest of your day. All right. Be careful with your thoughts.